Well, welcome to our 46th film uh, in our series pattern of the month. And maybe I should start by saying, wishing you a happy new year. And uh, we are going into new season and uh, new fishing season is always exciting. You never know. You always hope and uh, hope is the last thing that leaves us salmon fishermen. Um, as I said last time, doing the Jog Scott, we're going to do something totally different today. And we're going to do one of these, should I say, shrimp flies or uh, pig flies. We actually launched a whole series of these pigs. And the thing with these are, first of all, they can be super effective. And uh, don't ask me why. And to be honest with you, I never really liked them. Uh, but now I think I'm getting into a design that makes me think that these actually can work for also for my fishing. Um, the problem, I think, with all these flies with feelers uh, is that they have a tendency to lose balance. And when you don't have a wing that steers it, it needs to be ballast when you tie it. And putting those flies in your wallet or in your boxes, the feelers have a tendency to slip down on the side or not to be even, meaning that when you put this fly in the water, it might start to spin or uh, uh, it don't fish the way you want it to do, to, to fish. Um, of course, you can weight it, you can put a little wing on, there's a million things you can do. But I think I, for me, I think I've solved it. Um, and that is by making a new little invention. It's a rubber cone. We call it them feeler cones. And they are, uh, they are made in a way that you have places to put your feelers so they actually will stay in the same place all the time. They can't slip on the tube. Uh, you tie the feelers onto a regular plastic tube, they can always slip. The feeler cone will hold out the feelers and it will fix them in a certain spot. That's the idea, and I think it, uh, to my knowledge, works really fine so far. And I'm now going to show you how I use those on this kind of fly. Okay, uh, so I'm going to start by uh, using, uh, I'm going to use two, two tubes, as I always do. And I'm going to do, I could do this call it a nasty banana pig. I can do a gold one, but uh, I'd like to add a little fluorescent to it. So that's why I'm doing the yellow, uh, the yellow medium one and uh, the gold extra small. And I cut this little angle here. But here I do something that is a bit different and that is that I take one of these rubber cones and I pull it on to the medium. We have those, they will, will come uh, in three sizes. This is our, our medium one and I press down the tube all the way down so it's even with the cone. Uh, this means that Inside here I will have enough room and enough tube for me to fix the hook. So I take this and I put it on and I will um, do a little angle on this, it's always easier. 
and, and then I am uh, just adjusting this. I'm going to use the 12 volt olive thread today and I'm fixing a little bit of thread over the part that I've been cutting. So I will secure these two tubes together without uh, making it stiff and brittle. Okay, so what I do now is I move my thread back and to the cone there is a little part of it. Remember these are soft, a little flat part. This is where I, I fix the thread. And perhaps you can see it now. I'm going to show you again, since this is something nobody done before, I think, uh, how these work. Uh, if you look at it, you can see the space where these feelers should be put. And um, it's soft, uh, meaning it doesn't break, and it will still hold my feelers. I will start by having four hackles, stripped hackles, and I always keep a bit of the tip here, uh, and then I will take this to make it simple. I will take these four. Nothing is simple when you're getting this old, but I put these next to each other, all four of them. I can do it two at a time, trying to be smart here. Okay, I put them next to each other and I cut away so I get a flat part here. And this means I get like a little puddle. This puddle will make the, uh, the feelers move. The water will move these. So I take these two first and I take my other two ones. And I do the same. Put them next to each other. Cut to get the right paddle form. And I want them to be on a quite, this is going to be quite a big fly. I want them to be quite big like this. Then I will take the first one and I will find one of these um, tracks, this little uh, space, and I will tie it in. And the easiest for me here is to tie in one at a time. I can make sure that my thread works back. So this is also pointing straight out in the right place. If I want, I can use a little plier to just flatten those so they don't turn. But um, it's always better to do things a little as simple as possible. So I'll just try to turn, tie this in. Make sure you get them even in length or about even. And you can twist this so it looks good on your fly. Like that, and then I can just turn this fly and uh, put in the next one in the next little space I have on the cone. Make sure it's about where I want it. Forgot to cut, cut this, it's always easier to cut away things. Uh, and then I take the last one. There we go. Put it in the space there. Move the thread back. 
and look at this so this is going to be quite even for me okay that means the uh, four feelers are now put in and remember I'm going to build up the body to press this down so they will not be able to move uh, but first maybe I should say that you guys uh, following our little films maybe seen the film where Hawk and Quick catches his uh, big fish on Steinfossen and um, I for sure didn't like that fly but Hokan it's the kind kind of similar fly tied in a different way but Hokan used feelers from his cat uh, to put down here but um, I don't have a cat and uh, uh, I have another thing here and I'm gonna walk over and I'm gonna uh, show you what, what my little pet is and you'll understand Okay, wild boar. So the one, the thing with these is that they're stiff, and they're also have the divided tips, and uh, uh, they will vibrate, and they will uh, uh, they will create a sound just the same as vibrations in water and uh, I think they add a lot to the design and I take a few of those and I make sure they're not too long the feelers should be uh, the hackle feelers should be longer than this and I just spread them and when I hold them in like this they will end up in my little feeler cone on different places and uh, spreading them a little bit take a few more and uh, I can twist this again and tie these in make sure they are about the same length of course I can be very careful and do one at a time here but I don't think that is unnecessary I will pull tie in a few pull them around and uh, I will then add a few of the same that's been uh, bleached and uh, uh, dyed or as these ones just being dyed um, and I dye these yellow to match the, the, the color of the fly. Losing a few here, but I don't want to lose the good ones, meaning the ones that have a very good split uh, top. And I tie this in again. Twist this, keep on twisting, take a few more and uh, is it worth the hassle? Could do it differently but I think this is the way to get them quite even and again with a fly like this you can't have it too uneven because there's not a wing that will steer this looking at this seeing that I need quite maybe just a few more of the bleached ones on one side here and uh, uh, it's hard to say how many you should use but um, quite a few maybe 20 
or so. And I take these and I put them where I think there's too few and I work my thread backwards to the fillet cone. And now, since these are quite stiff, I'm pressing these down against the cone uh, to where they can't slip. And this is the whole thing with the, with the cone. Cutting away, and since I'm gonna have a big, I was going to say ugly, but a big fat body here, I don't have to be so careful while cutting. The only thing is that I don't want them to be in front of uh, where I'm gonna end the fly. Okay, how does that look? Does it look good? I think it looks fairly good. The thing with this now is that I have stiff materials and I have these where the water will hit those and they will move. But I have very little movement in this fly. And uh, you know, I love these feathers. I love the ostrich and I've taken a brownish uh, olive one here uh, that I'm going to tie in. I'm going to try to do two turns uh, to add volume but most of all motion to the fly. And um, looking so I have these to be about the same length as, as my, uh, my wild boar. And uh, it's a little too long. And the good thing with a feather like this is that you can decide. You just strip down so you get the length you need. And since the diameter here is big, I need quite a long part here. Much longer than on a, when I tie on the fly where the, or on the tube where the diameter is maybe half of this. So remember that, otherwise you will end up with uh, wanting to do two turns and it will be too short for you. Okay, move the thread back again. Take this and double back, meaning I just pull the fibers and I don't want them to double in too fat. Come on now, be my friend. Tie this in, one and two turns. And uh, then I will secure this. Pull it a little bit so it's tight. Make sure I keep track on where I have the cut part on this. Looking at this now and uh, I have added a bit of motion and also added to the profile of the fly. Uh, then I'm gonna put on one more hackle here to get even more volume in the back part of this. I use a, a golden olive uh, soft tackle and uh, it's got some extremely soft part but I take some of that away because this is for volume and I pull it back, do the triangle, cut it and tie it in and put on two turns. I'm hoping to do two turns anyway. Do this again, double back, pull back, double back, get these to help creating volume. There we go. Back down the thread now over the feather. 
other way looks maybe a little bulky but I will say that it will be good when it all gets wet uh, time to do a body and uh, here I will uh, work with dubbing and uh, since I in a lot of my flies want to add some fluorescence I'm gonna use some some fluorescence in the dubbing too uh, too many pigs all over the place okay but first I will uh, use uh, a bit of hollow braid or Alta Gold hollow braid uh, for a ribbing and why rib a body like this well the ribbing will help hold the dubbing in place backing down again far away back over this uh, on the bigger ones I had a big one here somewhere here we go a big one when I do a big one I can uh, put on a body hackle uh, but on the smaller ones here I think that the dubbing is enough and I actually start with yellow dubbing not the glitz one but the, the yellow dubbing I'm gonna form uh, this is easier to form than the glitz to form a thick back part and um, it's a bit shorter fiber than the glitz but it's still as you can see it dubs really easy and uh, the key here is to be brave enough to tie in enough material here and I hold this back and I back down the yellow and I back it down quite a bit a little more the reason I don't do glitz here is that this dubbing gets a little thicker and uh, I want this to have a thick back part here I think that's enough then I change over the glitz if you do a small one you can keep on doing dubbing I will do glitz in our uh, nasty rusty color mix those of you who've seen this know that I use a lot of nasty rusty I think it's a fantastic color mix actually a bit of copper a little bit of orange a little bit of gold uh, like all our SSS there are five different colors in each blend to make them look more alive a wider colors perspective and I dub this on here and I will now make sure that this will be thinner and thinner to the front so I form like a reversed tapering on the body maybe this is one of the reasons I didn't like this fly design um, don't like Francis flies and uh, I want to fly to move and to create something that looks a bit alive and uh, if you put the big diameter in the front of the fly you will move more water but here you see how I taper down to make this really thin here I think that will be enough then I take my ribbing and uh, as you know with our braids they're easy to to just trim down to any um, diameter you want and I pull this down in the body trying to do five turns here keep some tradition in the tying even if this flies 
far away from tradition. Okay, take this and I fold this back before I cut it. And because then it can't slip. Then I will take our mean little brush and I will brush this and I don't want it to be too much brushed. I want, I want a little sparkle and I want uh, the fibers to follow the fly a little bit. You can see how the glitz dubs easier than the dubbing. I'll do it like this using my scissor just to cut this down so I get the nice shape otherwise brushing you can easily create an even fly I don't want this I want the fly to grow like this and um, the ostrich looks a little bulky here but I think it will be fine actually okay so gonna put on two jungle cocks and uh, on a fly like this I do the jungle cock very very short uh, I put them in I can put them in on the side but I form it first here and I put them in so they reach about back to where I have the yellow like a little V thought that was too short but it's okay so I start with the one on my side, always looking uh, see uh, that this will be good. And uh, they can twist a little using my thumbnail to move the feather a little, like that. Taking the next one, looking so I get the same length. Oops, this had a better shape start with so I don't need to form it so much look at the length the bat where the yellow goes and uh, tie it in this is moving in it's a tricky one there are a few tricky feathers they don't want to be where you want them to be then uh, I can just Pull it out and put it in again, but I think this will be just fine if I just form it a little more. Okay, so one last little thing here. Actually thinking this looks a little bulky, but if you have <clears throat> a fly where you do it this way, where it looks perfect when it's when it's dry it will end up being too skinny when it gets wet so it's better it looks too much these ostrich fibers you know i can show you i've been saying this many times but you take a few of the ostrich fibers like this it's just too no bad feather take another one to show you the thing what happens with ostrich and the reason I really like the ostrich I start liking ostrich is that they will when wet turn into something that looks almost like a heron article and you see how this will trim down and you can understand how the volume will change a lot okay so I'm gonna do a little yellow olive uh, soft tackle and keeping the hackle in the front small um, because I don't want it to be too bulky in the front and I tie this in I can use uh, my plier but I can also just talk nicely to this feather and uh, Double it back, getting all the fibers wrong on the right side. And do two or three turns of this. Here we go. Like this. Pulling it back a little bit. Forming a little hackle. 
that will add a little bit of motion and a little bit of uh, life when you have the two colored feathers they look they make the fly look more alive i think okay just to end it up and uh, i'll end it up with a small turbo and uh, i will use the micro when i say small it's not the size it's just me explaining that I want it slim so I'll put on a brown one a little bit of glue support a little bit put it on and just press down the cone and uh, if you've been followed me tying you see that i always do that before i take my thread away okay like that take it up looks terrible don't you think but this will fish nicely i think support again cut it off two three mil and uh, can I use this lighter? Am I allowed wrong color? But here we go. And I just melt it down. Wait a couple of seconds before it before I touch it. Okay. Did it turn out good? Uh, let me just wet this a little bit so you'll see how this will will lose a bit of its volume. It looks a little thick you have the feelers that will uh, work in the water you have the stiff uh, wild board that will hold out and keep this uh, volume of the fly and you have the hackles that will uh, ostrich hackles that will give it some motion Is it good looking? It's all about what you think. <laughs> the, as I say, the best looking fly is the one you pick out of the corner of the mouth of the fish. I think this turned out good and I think it will fish good. And maybe the wild boar version will beat Hawkins cat version and uh, gonna catch a 30 kilo fish on this this summer okay and uh, thank you for watching this and um, those of you who are interested in this little uh, I would call it an invention but we are getting these for sale soon those of you who subscribe or to buy our packs will have uh, these in our packs it takes a bit of time to produce those the way we do it so uh, we don't have that many in stock yet but they are coming in three sizes and um, in uh, 10 colors and uh, maybe you will find other ways to use this uh, for me it secures my pigs or my pig style flies uh, to always fish the way I want them and to be stable and uh, uh, I think it adds to the fly design okay thank you very much uh, it's a bit cold here in our in the tying room uh, I'm gonna go back to the fireplace and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this little odd fly and uh, that you will try and that you will uh, like the feeling cone and what it can do to your time and uh, next month we're back with something big and mean and different uh, so stay strong and uh, tie on